All right, here we go, guys. Um, as we discussed last week, I'm going to burn through the Bones Brigade Series 12. So we did Rodney Mullen. Today we are doing Mike McGill. And so if you don't know who Mike McGill is, uh, check him out online. But uh, he invented the McTwist, which is the 540. And uh, yeah, he dominated with the Bones Brigade throughout the 80s. Um, he also was a stunt double for Christian Slater and Gleam in the Cube, if you haven't watched that flick. Some good 80s action happening in uh, Gleaming the Cube. Definitely check it out. And so, yeah, so that's who Mike McGill is. But let's just dive into this. I, again, I mean, there's obviously so much you could talk about the guy. Just go on and Google it. Check his Wikipedia page. There's a million YouTube videos. Watch the Bones Brigade um, documentary. There's lots of good information on him. Um, so I'm not going to get into all of the stuff around Mike. Let's just dive into the board here. Uh, this is a wicked board. This one has some good memories for me. My buddy Mark, growing up, had this board. He had it in a red colorway. Um, so just this graphic, the shape has some really good memories associated uh, with it for me anyways. Um, so let's just start with the bottom of the deck here. So this is Vernon Cortland Johnson who came up with this graphic. Mike McGill moved from the fighter jet into this, you know, more cooler uh, skull and snake with the lightning bolts up here. Mike McGill came from Florida and so he had some input as far as the snake and the lightning. Lots of storms happen in Florida and lots of snakes and so that was his input into it. Um, the graphic was originally made in 1984 and that's actually also when Mike McGill came up with the McTwist but this graphic with the snake and skull was 1984. Uh, later, and I believe it was around 86, so if you guys know for sure, please let me know. They put in the background of the snake skin, um, but 84 was the original um, graphic here, which is the uh, lightning bolts, the skull snake, and the, the name. And so, yeah. So, again, Vernon Cortland Johnson, VCJ, we see that down there, um, along with the little copyright. So, on the top of the deck, we get the dragon. And uh, this one has the tighter tail. It's not that fan tail. And then we see down here, Bones Brigade. SOC 2020. So this one was supposed to be released spring of 2020, got bumped to summer, finally came out in the fall of 2020. And so lots of guys waiting for this one to drop. Um, and so, yeah, there was a lot of guys waiting because lots of guys were just starting to get into the collecting world at that point, including myself. It was really hard for us to find any of the Bones Brigade series at a decent price. Um, I managed to pick up a couple of the series 11s, um, but yeah, it was, it was hard to get in. You had to drop some good cash to get anything. And if you wanted, so the series 11s were all the natty ones. So if you wanted like natural, and so if you wanted anything with a color, I mean, you're having to go back into the older series and, you know, starting price points were 350, four, 500 bucks. Um, and so now, even if you're looking at, um, the series 12 online, just because they haven't released a series in a while, um, you're talking three, four, five hundred dollars um you know even for the series 12 now and when you're looking at the series 5 and 6 you know especially for the hawks uh that black the purple one or sorry the black and purple and the pink hawk i mean there are eight nine hundred a thousand dollars reissues um that they're going for and so good news for those guys that are just starting to get into collecting right now there is rumor of a series 13 coming out so ho <clears throat> hopefully you can get your hands on a retail one and not have to drop hundreds of dollars to get your hands on uh, these older Bones Brigade series. Um, yeah, so with this deck, you got the plastic sleeve, just like you did with the Rodney Mullen. They all came in those plastic sleeves. I don't have the sleeve. I have it packed away somewhere. It's nothing exciting. It's just a plastic sleeve. Uh, but you also got, you were supposed to get a pin with it. Um, this is the pin. And so it is, uh, yeah, just the ripper with the wings there. It says Bones Brigade on top. And uh, then has a little quote from the Search from Animal Chin movie. So you're supposed to get these, but unfortunately the retailers got these pins and they were selling them individually. And not many of us actually got the pins with the decks, which kind of sucks. So out of all the decks I bought, I only got two pins and I think I bought eight decks in total. Uh, and then you also got this rider card, which is cool. So again, we talked about this, we did the Mullen. I'm doing the McGill now, and we'll just work our way across this way. So the next video will be the, uh, the Guerrero. So these cards are nice because you get to see the whole series. And then on the other side of it, you get the skater information. Talks a bit about Mike McGill at the start. Um, and then it gets into the graphics with Brennan Cortland Johnson. 
a little bit more about Mike, just talking about how he still has a store going, and then Stacy has some information there. The really important thing for me on this, I love getting the additional information, um, but it's just this limited run number down here. And so the limited run number is there was only 2,000 of these decks produced. Apparently, we know there's been extra because the Blem sell and they've they've run them on Skate One where they're selling blind or sorry signed Blem decks. Uh, which is just short for blemish. If you don't know, I didn't know at start. Uh, but yeah, so if you hear people say blem deck, it just means there was a blemish. And so um, they sell the over or the extra decks that had blems on them. And so, but this one is a uh, one of uh, 2000. So this is actually 208 of 2000 is this number. So this deck is 208 of 2000. And so what I wish they actually did with these numbers, though, is uh, attach them to the deck. And the reason why I say that, without getting into a big whole ordeal around it, I did a trade with a guy. Dude ended up screwing me. I sent him the deck. Um, he was supposed to send me one. <clears throat> he ghosted me as soon as he got mine. Deck went missing. I lost it. I seen him selling it online. And uh, I spoke to the police about it. I knew it was him. He was selling it for a hundred bucks. And you just, you know, if you're looking for these boards, you don't find them for a hundred bucks. And so he was like, oh, I just don't really like the board anymore. Um, it's brand new, new condition. Um, just, you know, want to get something else. So he's blowing it out for a hundred bucks, but I had no evidence that it was actually my board. I knew it was, but from a police, from a legal standpoint, there was no solid evidence because easily just toss this card or he at least didn't have it in the ad. So I couldn't say, well, that was my deck because I know the number. Um, if it was actually stamped in the deck somewhere, <coughs> excuse me, um, then that would have helped. So I think it is important, Powell, if you're listening for series 13, if you're gonna make them numbered like that, if you could put them somewhere on the deck, that would be really cool. Um, if you could stamp it in there, <coughs> something that wasn't removable. All right, so let's dive into the specs of this guy. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice here, guys. I've actually done a couple videos already. They end up getting too long, whatever. So I'm just trying to do a nice clean cut here. <clears throat> All right. Length, 30.43. Width, 9.94. The wheelbase, so in between the trucks here, is, let me find the other hole, sorry, 15.3 inches. The nose, just a little small guy in this. Top of the trucks to the nip, tip of the nose is 3.75 the tail down here is 6.38 inches again this is the gray or silver <clears throat> um, the number again on this one was again there was only 2000 produced and this one again was 208 of 2000 the concave on this guy is the sp3 so i'll give you a good look there there you go so not a lot of concave on it but that's what this is uh, the shape is the 277. Again, this is the bottom of the shape, right? So 277 is the shape on that. It's 7-ply hard rock maple. Um, let's look at the hole pattern here. <clears throat> so just put that up for you guys. Old school hole pattern. So get your hands on some Indy 6 hole uh, base plates and you'll be fine if you are going to mount it. Uh, what else? Uh, as far as the um, graphic on here, it is the screening to the heat transfer. So then they just put that heat transfer on, they heat press that on there. But essentially, yeah, they screen onto the heat transfer and then put it on. And so that's why you don't see any holes for the trucks there. But obviously, we do have holes for the trucks, right? And so you can just easily push something through. It's just like a confetti. It pops out really easy. And you can see that on the top there that I've popped those out just to hang them. Yeah, outside of that, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Super sick deck. Again, as I mentioned, so many good memories associated with this one for me because my buddy Mark had one. Um, <clears throat> but there you go, another good look at the graphic. All right, guys, peace out. Hope you have a fabulous week. So again, the next one we're looking at is the Tommy G. So I'll make sure that I put like a freeze frame of this card here so you can read it at the end of the video. And uh, if I didn't already, I'll put up a picture of the deck in plastic so you can see what it looked like in the sleeve as well. All right, peace out, guys. Have a fabulous week. Cheers.